Okay, so someone threw out this for a wrestling match, and I immediately thought, I love this idea, because I could really see <clears throat> the crippler, Chris Benoit, having a solid feud with a lunatic fringe, Dean Ambrose. If anything, both these guys had that level of intensity that would work brilliant in this. And with, and with Benoit, I was going to say a phrase, and then I had to stop because I didn't want to say it because of how he ended his career and his life. But with him being a, a silent, more aggressive individual that would really allow Dean to effectively have to run the mic on this. That's one of Dean's strong. I think Dean would do a phenomenal job running, running the mic on this. Because taking on someone who's just the stoic dynamo of an individual pairs beautifully against Dean Ambrose on paper. I mean, this, this is a feud where had they both existed at the same time, I really could have seen these two guys having ridiculous knockdown drag out brawls. Easily. So, let's go through this. Strength. I met Chris Benoit, and when Chris Benoit gave you a handshake, you felt your whole upper body move in the process. He was ridiculously strong. This is a man who was, you know, he turned people like Lesnar and was able to match power with someone like Lesnar. He was an absolute dynamo. Man, the people he was chucking around with suplexes just were amazing to see. Speed. You know? You know what? Endurance as well. Chris Benoit, highly agile. For a man of his size with his strength, I think I'm kind of like Neville. Just not as flippy and more man based. And for endurance, if you have the network, go back to 2001 Backlash, emanating from Rosemont, Illinois. I remember because I was there. Ultimate Submissions Match versus Kurt Angle. He wins in overtime. It's a 30 minute Iron Man match where you can only win by submission. That means he went longer than 30 minutes with Angle and won. Toughness. Mm. Ugh. In, in the E, Chris Benoit took some ridiculously horrendous bumps. I remember he's taking on, I think it was Booker T on SmackDown. He went for his uh, his suicide dive, and I think Booker T kind of like hip tossed him, and he went small of back first into the announce table. As well as a lot of the, the chair shots that he took. But. I'm giving it to Dean because of the way he wrestled in CZW. Yes, Benoit was in ECW, but he never wrestled a super hardcore style. Dean did stuff that you would only see people perform on zombies in a horror film. Stuff with like sawzalls and a bunch of the fluorescent light tubes. So less wrestling, more human massacre. Here's where it becomes really easy now. Striking. Dean with the slap chop offense. He's got a nice chop, but a knife edge for Benoit? Yeah. Or his really short, like, double arm clothesline? I mean, he had some wickedly stiff, snug strikes. You know, we'll just. We'll just go through the next two. 
grappling. Brilliant submission work. I mean, I mean uh, grappling. Brilliant suplex work. Just an amazing technician. And submissions. Man, whether it was a sharpshooter, cross face, his mat work, I'd probably say if you had to rank them, I would probably put Kurt maybe at the top of mat work for e for wrestlers who spent time in the E. And then depending on the mood that I'm in, I would I would almost go to either Benoit or Brian. I think Brian did some phenomenal submissions work. Brian's submission work was better in Ring of Honor than in than the main E. So if I'm looking at just how they performed in the E, it would probably go Angle, Benoit, Daniel. Probably thinking, where's Hart? Hart's in there, but I think it was the style person at that time versus where it is now. The submission game has changed vastly. But man, he was an amazing submission art wrestler. High flying. So now I have to compare two guys who both do a small amount of diving moves. Dean Ambrose, elbow drop. Standing the opponent, pulling on the ground, pulling outside, elbow drop. And a, a pretty decent, he tight suicide dive. And a pretty decent suicide dive. Ben Wall also had a suicide dive. Oh God, this is a lot tougher than I thought it was going to be. It's also a diving headbutt. So they've got a similar amount of moves, but every now and then, but while would also toss out a missile drop kick. I haven't seen Dean do one yet. Doesn't mean that he can't. I haven't seen him do one yet. Over with the crowd. I know. I know. I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. Benoit always had a nice. Reaction from the crowd. His loudest reaction was, of course, then at WrestleMania 20 when he was champion and Eddie got in the ring with him. Because everybody loved Eddie. And I think Benoit had a very good crowd reaction. Music hits for Dean, plays, plays erupts well. Dean hasn't been booked very well, but the crowd pops very well for him. Ring psychology. Hear me out on this, hear me out on this, hear me out on this. While framing this match in my mind, <clears throat> Benoit is going to be undeniably dominant throughout the vast majority of this match. Which means he's going to be constantly in the aggressive phase. He's going to be constantly working on top. Benoit works well working on top. Given his size, he also worked well under, on, on, uh, uh, from underneath too. But Dean is at his absolute best working from underneath. And I think he does a great job with psychology. People think he sucks at psychology. I want you to think about three matches. The Shield boys have wrestled Triple H. Each of them have. Reigns, H, WrestleMania. Was it an amazing match? But the match means you go, man, that was a solid match. Rollins, Triple H. Most recent WrestleMania. Good match. Now, Ambrose, Triple H, Roadblock. Which was the event before Triple H took on Roman Reigns. That match is probably one of my favorite Triple H matches in a long time. And I love Triple H. I have one with logos and a signature tattooed on me, so I dig me some Triple H, and I thought that those two, that was a match that made Dean Ambrose. They squandered it right afterwards, but that match made Dean Ambrose. Whether it's him working a slightly more submission game, grabbing a hold of the nose of Triple H, trying to rip it off, I mean, he worked a beautiful match. And you can tell, when Dean cares, his matches are fantastic. And Dean, Dean gets it. The problem is a lot of the time, Dean goes into autopilot. He seems very non-passionate. I know it's been a complaint scout by many people, so it's nothing new. 
Even Austin said that he lacks passion. But when he clicks with it, oh, it's beautiful to watch. Ambrose in the same vein as Orton. When Orton is like, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to put an awesome match. He's one of the best wrestlers in the world. When Orton's like, eh. And he makes it seem way too easy. Like, none of it makes him struggle because he's that good of an athlete. It's a Britain issue. But Ambrose, when he's working someone like Benoit, that's going to be a beautiful match. It's going to put Dean where he, where he works best. Working underneath... And he's going to get the crowd sympathetic to him. Because he's great at it. He's great at it. And Mike work. This, this should be a no-brainer. Benoit didn't talk. Benoit did in the ring. That's why looking at this, it, it's 7-4. to four, Entirely based on the fact that Benoit was brilliant in the ring. A true technical expert. Taking on someone like Dean... Well, you know, Dean, Dean's a brawler. But he's a brawler who works well against technical wrestlers. Dean is highly versatile. Ambrose Jericho worked. Yeah, the silent match was kind of honky, but you know what I go, worked. Their feud was great. They feuded hard over a potted plant. And it was surprisingly good. Dean also was a great brawler style with someone like Bray Wyatt. So the versatility of Dean, and Dean being able to carry the feud on the mic, would make these two guys have an absolutely phenomenal feud. But I think given the physical acclimate of Benoit, Benoit's going to go over in this. So, uh, next week I've got one more wrestling one, then I will do the, the recap on how people thought about uh, Angle, uh, Brian, over with the crowd. And then I will do another month of, of course, comic book characters. <laughs>